What's up? What's up? Billy Carson here, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. Welcome to another Forbidden Knowledge podcast. I have a very special friend of mine here, Mark Menard. He's also my neighbor. Now, this man is an interesting and incredible human being. Uh, he's an author of a book, which is absolutely incredible. We'll talk about that a little bit today as well. All right. 16 reasons why your business sucks. Now, a person with ego might think, oh, man, that's that's harsh. But a person that's open to learning will be like, I need to find out what this guy has to say. Also, he's the president and founder of DreamShine in Ohio, which is an amazing business, which we'll talk a little bit about today as well. And uh, most importantly, he's just a solid, solid human being. We've traveled together. We spent time together. Our kids play together. Right. That's You're right. coming to my wedding. That's right. So it's coming uh, up fast. man. Yeah. Just to let you know, the level of person that's sitting here in my house, <laughs> and he lives right around the corner, so we know each other very, very well. But he has a wealth of knowledge to share with us today, and so we're going to get it started right now. All right, peace. Now, so Mark, you have an incredible story. I know that you talk about this, um, you know, quite a bit with, um, you know, your viewers, your listeners right. on your podcast. Just for, you know, the sake, the short version for people who are just kind of tuning in, who, who don't know who you are on my network. Sure. Uh, can you give them a breakdown? Yeah. I mean, to, to sum it up, like, like you said, we live down the street from each other and the younger me, I would have seen us here or this neighborhood and be like, it, it must be nice. Mm -hmm. Like that's just for the people born into it. Mm. And I had this victim mindset. So I was basically like age 17, living on my own in a trailer, doing drugs, selling drugs, blacking out all the time. I worked at a Harley Davidson diner. If you could just pick, I was trailer trash. I was white trailer trash. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And I shouldn't have been. Mm. Um, and I had this victim mindset. I, I had great, great parents. Mm. I like I had no excuse. And it took me waking up in jail one day mm. and like falling into my body, mm -hmm. not knowing how I got there. What was in looking around? There's this mm. dude with a giant beard. Yeah. It took a minute to be like, Wait, what's I found out I was in jail. Mm. Also, I blacked out, rear-ended mm. a guy that mm. was like th in his 30s, this big cowboy dude. I'm wow. only 17. He had like prior uh, warrants out for assault. Oh, man. <laughs> and the police report, because I blacked out, yeah. said I just like briskly rear-ended him the drive through And I was just laying there. Wow. And he just beat. Oof. So when they took my mug shot, the cops like, do you know why you're here? Oh, wow. I didn't because I was like blacked out. My face comes up on the screen. It's all br my my eye sockets fractured. My jaws <laughs> broken. And it took me going through court, going through still the victim mindset, yeah. it, the systems against me, the blah, all the crap. Mm. When when I was my own worst enemy, and um, the judge, I brought in like all the pictures of my face beat up. Thought the judge was going to have all this sympathy. <laughs> I, I thought I was so smart, like you know, yeah, yeah, victim. Yeah. <laughs> And the judge was like, are you done? And I'm like, well, yeah. And she's like, so this 36 year old guy beat you up and has assault. And yeah. she's like, for like, forget about you. Like you, you were driving. So your blood alcohol was so high. Mm -hmm. The police thought that you were dead when you were in the hole, like in the detox cell. That's you should because I was doing other drugs, all yeah. this crap. I didn't tell her like, oh, I was doing other drugs. That probably yeah. helped me. Mm -hmm. But she's like, you could have you could have kept like you could have 
killed a family. You, I had done, I had tickets for so many other things. Like yeah. you could have ran, like forget about your face getting beat in. Yeah. You could have took like, out a whole family. You, you were driving blacked out. You were driving, like, you think this is just a, so she gave me just everything. Mm -hmm. Probation for two years, lost my license, had to ride mm -hmm. my bike in, do a breathalyzer every yeah. other day. Wow. Um, thousands of dollars in fines, like 800 hours of therapy, community mm -hmm. service twice. It, it was just, yeah. and if I did anything else, she's like, you're not, you're, you're going to be 18 mm -hmm. and anything at like anything, yeah. a ticket for drinking underage. Yeah. We're not even talking about jail anymore. Mm. So I was like, all right. And then I kind of hit, it got me to start changing. I read my first book when I was 18. Wow. 18. Cause I'm an author now. Yeah. I yeah. thought I was too stupid mm -hmm. because school made me like, yeah. I'm not playing the victim card now, but like I was wired differently. Mm -hmm. And to everyone out there that's wired differently, I took that as it's just for the straight A students. Yeah. And I and I just went down this whole different path when I realized, wait a second. Once I read my first it was it's not a personal it was Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. Okay. <laughs> but it <laughs> but got still, me it's to a book. read. And it's, I'm reading. like, I realized I was a really fast reader too. Wow. Then that led to like personal development. Yeah. It, it led down the line. Then it got me to go to college, mm -hmm. which I don't even think everyone, that's a whole other subject. Yeah. But for me, it was about completing something and doing something mm -hmm. and college was like i thought that i was stupid yeah so to me it was like i'm going to complete going to college and i remember telling the guys in the trailer i was thinking about going to school wow and they called me like a sellout they're oh, like man. people like us don't go to go to college that's like the programming code that's the programming yeah. code speaking yeah and it, it's what people don't get it's, it's so easy to be like i change like that but it was a process yeah. because part of me thought the programming, am mm -hmm. I being a sellout? Like yeah. you're old. Are you, try, start, you start questioning you yourself. Back down yeah, you start questioning. I'm like, they they did have my back in a lot of crazy situations. Yeah. Are, are they good? They're, they're both dead now. Wow. One of them overdosed. Mm. Off, had two little girls off a bunch of painkillers, um, yeah. bottle of Jack, and the wow. other one shot himself. Damn. So like, you know, you're the average of the people you hang out with. Mm -hmm. Like I would have been that's oh, yeah. where I would have been. Yeah. In the grave, pushing up daisies. So, yeah. So I haven't heard that expression in a while. So, <laughs> I'm old school, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Add a little light to, uh, to the dark. Yeah. Huh? But that led to me finishing college. Still had no idea what I was going to do. But I college taught me more about perseverance yeah. than it did about education. Mm -hmm. And people that were like more book smart dropped yeah. out when you had to do like a 30 page paper. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this is going to break you. And yeah. I'm like, I don't want to go back to jail. Right. <laughs> like, so that adversity became kind of like a super, like I was able to tap into it yeah. and realize like, what, like mm -hmm. these people are weak. I yeah. thought, I thought they were the successful, like they're yeah. kind of You thought joke. they had the stronger minds. Yes. Yeah. But not, it, minds, but not mindset. Mm. And so then I learned about perseverance and then that led after college to, I started working with people with disabilities. Okay. You mentioned dream shine. Yeah. It, it led to me seeing a need to open something for mm. people with disabilities. Nice. I actually had a fight against the governor at the state of Ohio at the mm. age of 26 Wow. to open it, like become Damn. a self-taught lawyer. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I had to go up and get, we got the actual state law changed because we were one of the first wow. private programs See? to open in the state. And everyone said it would be impossible, mm. including the lady that worked right with the governor who personally called my phone and told me at age 26, yeah. this little kid not to open wow. dream shine because they had a monopoly over mm -hmm. they're like we've been doing it this way for 35 odd years yeah. we control all the funding it's not going to work out yeah so 17 years later we serve over 65 individuals there we wow. have a two and a half acre campus mm -hmm. um log home waterfront lodge a pirate ship building nice we're still expanding um a couple of books Mm -hmm. I had I had my teacher in high school tell me people like you should just drop out. Oh, yeah. And she I mean, maybe the way I was acting and stuff could have been, but I really thought I was stupid. And it's like. Unfortunately, the educational system we have here in America 
it, it if you're in a, under the right situation, it can Sorry. make you think. It can make you begin to self doubt. Yeah. It can make you believe what they're telling you. I had my third grade teacher tell me that I would because you know she told she'd everybody stand up in class and say what you want to do for a living, and I told her that I wanted to be famous and be on TV, and everybody laughed at me. And everybody, I mean, when I said they laughed, they were gut laughing. Yeah. And she kind of, you know, chuckled a little bit and said, you know, you'll never be on TV. Look where you come from. You're too poor. And she wanted me to pick something everyone else picked, like a janitor or a postman. Right. You know, something like that a, a, a garbage, you know, dry or garbage man or whatever. That's what they were all picking. Policemen, firemen. But I was like, I'm going like to be famous and be on TV. in the box, basically. Yeah. This is you. This is your path. Yeah. The, it, this that's the best that it, I can like get. Like you said, it like mo a victim mindset. But then you almost people get molded into because you look at them yeah. as like authority, kind of. Yeah, it's a programming code, and there's nothing wrong with those jobs. I have nothing against. Of course against, not. Of course not. I love those people. I mean, I I tip my garbage man every three months a hundred dollars. Uh, but it, it's not about the job. It's about that's not what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't ever let anyone put their limitations on you yeah exactly. that's someone else's limitation put yeah, on you right it's no disrespect to the job if that's what you're feeling called to do yeah. but when someone's like you're gonna be this you should drop out mm -hmm. you should be a janitor yeah but yeah. that seed gets it gets planted it, like that. And a, a, a lot of the kids college. that wasn't going to be their passion but because that's the programming code of the system just yeah. to build a little bit of what you're talking about and to get off track, because that's the programming code of the system. A lot of these kids, friends of mine growing up, chose those pathways. One of the one of the very few that I still keep in touch with today is an actually is actually a fireman. Right. And so there his mindset is I just got to do this for another 10, 15 years so I can get retired and get my pension. But did he, did he really find his passion is the question. Right. Some people are passionate about being firemen. That's great. They have a Absolutely. phenomenal job. They save lives. But some people are doing it because that was what they were programmed to do, not what they really wanted to do. Yeah. Did they live? Did they end up living a full life? You broke the code and end up doing what you wanted to do. You went against all odds to do yeah. to fulfill your dream. Yeah. Which is yeah. what it takes, like going against the odds. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. people still can come visit us in our houses and stuff and say, Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you guys have a connection, or you got lucky. <laughs> but uh, and uh, and it we laugh because we know the blood, sweat, and tears Bro. of what. It, and and I say that to give everyone else hope mm -hmm. because no one told me that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I would see successful people, and I acted like I had this perfect blueprint. Yeah. I knew, and yes, like success leaves clues, but also people don't mention. The times where you don't know what you're doing, when yeah. you're terrified, when you're figuring out how mm -hmm. am I even going to meet payroll, oh, man. when you're creating something that <laughs> a vision is basically a hallucination. Yeah, it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, and you have it, and then you're trying to get other people bought into it, and some people give up yeah. when everyone calls them crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if if you don't. If that breaks you when people call you crazy because they can't see your hallucination, yeah, it, it's not for them. You've got to make it become a reality. Mm -hmm. Then they'll see it. Yeah, and it so takes true. going through all that, and it, yeah. it's not easy, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. There's a lot of risk that you have to take, right? So you took a lot of risk. One of the biggest risks that you took was um, the fact that you could have fell and fallen flat on your face. A lot of people don't consider that. that's one of the largest risks. And that's one of the largest reasons why people don't succeed or try, don't even try to succeed at something that they're doing. Because as soon as they get a little bit of pushback, they're like, you know what? I might fail. This looks like I might yeah. fail. Let me go back to something I know. Let me go back into my comfort zone. Yes. So yes. how did you continue to drive through your comfort zone to push against even the state to do this, to help these people, these disabled people? Yeah, it's a good question. Um and uh, and i'll give the actual like miracle like miracle territory mm -hmm. first of all is never discovered in the comfort zone mm. but how i actually did it was it was i would come home you could ask you know my wife aiva she's yeah. friends with your soon-to-be wife yeah i would come home we were starting my office was in a barn mm. it was 2007 the recession hit 
I quit. I had a career going. I was going to go to grad school. I got into this accelerated BSN program. Wow. I had this. You'll be then I was going on to be an anesthesiologist, but I didn't. Mm. I hated school. Mm. I quit that. I got fully certified. Mm. I'm getting threatening calls. I can't get a loan anywhere. I had good credit. So mm. when people think you have to have money to start a business, I didn't have we my office was in a barn like we had nothing. We yeah. had two kids back to back. Wow. My wife was work. I even was working the overnight. <laughs> I'd go work all day for Dream Shine. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd come in. She'd be like, "All right, I'm leaving. Hand me the, both our daughters." Mm -hmm. I'd be up all night with them. I'd be working, and what would keep me going was like, I, it, "It's your why yeah. and your per." And I would think about the in, like. There's one guy named Brian. I talk mm -hmm. about him in my book too. So, yeah. and he was an active young man with autism and some other things in the spectrum, and he was just in such a horrible situation. Mm -hmm because it was all institutionalized and he was young, he had energy. Yeah. And I imagine creating a place where he could like be at a beautiful resort like setting for people just because they didn't have anything like that. Nothing. And his mom had to quit her job mm. and take care of him all the time because he was a grown up, but he was still needs full yeah. assistance with everything. Wow. And so like, she was like, Mark, you have to do this. And, and so when I was going to quit, I would, think about all the people that were counting on me. Right. And then my vision that I'm creating and what would happen if I was to give up. Mm. Wow. And then it would come to me like you, you, you don't get to give up. So like we hear people say it a lot. Like yeah. it's, no, there's no like plan B you're going to have CD, but that's always just another strategy to keep getting towards plan A. Exactly. And so like for it literally wasn't an option, but it, it when people are in those moments and I would be lying if I didn't have so many times throughout life, throughout every level of new mm -hmm. things that I do yeah. where I'm like, I'm done. I quit. I'm throwing in the towel. Yeah. And then you wake up and it's like you wipe yourself off. I'd say my, like you put your arm on and you go back into battle mm -hmm. and you think about why you're doing it exactly. and all the people that will be losing because you give up on the purpose that is put into your heart and mm. it comes like you don't get to give up. Exactly. He's talking about living in your passion. And so many people today are not living in their passion. You have to find your passion, which Mark found his passion. His passion was helping disabled people in a way that they've never been helped before. And he had to go against all types of obstacles. And at any moment he could have given up. But like you heard, he went morning, noon and night, him and his wife flipping, flip flopping the hours of work. Right. Making it happen, going against all odds, literally struggling during the recession, which is the most craziest thing that anyone can go start a new business during a recession. Probably were told it will never work. Uh, uh, listen, m like my wife now is doesn't have to work. People see us now in this. Can mm -hmm. I give you an address? I'm just joking. <laughs> but it's, it's a nice like neighborhood. A, it's a gated community <laughs> with security, like NBA yeah. players, NFL players. And yeah. We don't. And I'm just saying that because the, it, they'll see it now and be like, oh, it must be nice. Mm -hmm. She's just been yeah. never had to work. And her and I laugh. That's and the we're assumption. like, let us be really real with you. Well, you have to have connections. We didn't have any. We both had you got to put in like the blood, sweat and the tears and the years in the years. She paid yes. all of her dues. Yes. Where were the people talking junk when she was lifting people out of their wheelchair and putting them on the toilet and washing their butts? Yeah, that's real work. And telling us, listen, the recession starting. This is the worst time to be starting a business. And I had to tune it out. I had to tune the news out mm -hmm. because people I made mean, my parents are the best people in the world. Yeah. But I remember some conversations. I'm like, mom, dad, I love you, mm -hmm. but I can't keep talking about this reset. I'm like, you don't think I'm already worried about that and a million other things. Yeah. I don't have, I, I'm not stopping. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to do me any good to right. focus on all this crap. And, exactly. and just like right now with the times and the economy, a lot of people are going to let that, that talk them out of pursuing whatever, by the way, whatever your dream is. Like I, I've had actors and stuff on my show, movie mm -hmm. directors. And 
some of their movies and stuff have helped reach me mm. and got me out of a dark spot. Wow. And if they didn't, if Stephen King wouldn't have written his book. Where would you be now? That was, I'm like, does he know he saved my life? Like yeah. from, go, he got me to read my first. So people think it always has, you don't have to be helping people with disability. I mean, it, it, that's whatever your passion part of is. my calling. But yeah. if you're making music, like whatever it is, it's tapping into that purpose. Tapping into the purpose. And so many people, and somebody, somebody was asking on TikTok, because I happen to catch it with my left eye, is this live? Yeah, this is live. You guys are behind the scenes live on TikTok while we're filming a live podcast. That's right. We're giving behind you the, the behind the scenes. The scenes. <laughs> That's right. So thanks for hanging out. We appreciate you. But, but back to what we were talking about with this passion thing. So many people don't realize that they have a gift. Yeah. But everyone has a gift. It's just that most of us don't open up the package. We don't right. unwrap it. Once you begin to unwrap that gift and figure out what it is that you love to do, whether you know how to do it now or not, the best thing you can do is learn how to become the best at it. And that takes time, effort, work and perseverance. Once you become really good at what you do or you hone in on what your passion is, you then have to find a need for that passion in the world. Right. Without right. a need for the passion, you might not be able to monetize it. Just yes. being honest. No, yeah, I always say if you're I, I saw a lot of good people get into my into my field mm -hmm. and go. They were cared, great hearts, but they didn't think you have to do business and purpose. Yeah, and because I'm always like if it, you got to be in it for the right reason. But if you're bankrupt, mm -hmm. you can't help anyone. You can't help anybody. You can't pay for your food. You can't pay for your team members. Mm -hmm. So you have to balance it both out. And you got to realize yeah. Is this just a hobby? Yeah. And and people ask too, like when we say our purpose, because people have asked, like, how do I find my purpose? Mm -hmm. And I I I could be like, well, I could give you, I could lie and be like, I knew when I was going to college that I was going to open. To, <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. I just kept doing. Mm -hmm. And then I got in the field, and mm -hmm. then I continue to see a need. Wait, there's no good services here. You identified then, the need. Yes. That's the key. It, I wasn't always like, I want to be a hashtag entrepreneur. It wasn't even hashtag anything. Back right. then. <laughs> entrepreneur. You know what? I, so like, yeah. just start doing like, and along mm -hmm. the way, if you keep going and, and yeah. keep pushing at different levels out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you will find it. Yeah. And people have to understand, like some people say, well, well, you know, they ask me all the time as well. Like, well, how can I find my passion? I, I don't really know what I want to do. I tell them to get a good old fashioned, a good old fashioned paper and pen. Right. All right. Hard to find in houses nowadays, right? There is. <laughs> listen, Write them down. There is a correlation between pretty much every successful person, including myself. I know that you write stuff down. Yes. Even if you have your phone and you put it into Evernote and mm -hmm. still write it down. I yeah. in my office, I have our new. I always have the new vision of what nice. I'm doing for yeah. Dream Shot. I've done that. You have to for for year for decades. You know what you are when you do something like that. You are an ordainer of destiny. You are yeah. ordaining your own destiny because you are visualizing and sending out into the universe a focused beam of energy and thought based on what you want to see occur in your business in the future and how many people it's going to impact. When you do that, so now you send out a ripple into space time, and that ripple literally is a time traveling version of you that goes out with the energy and everything into it and begins to create the future that you desire. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, then you're, you collapse it. You're starting to pull towards each other. Exactly. So that hallucin that hallucination yeah. turns into a vision and then yes. you put it down. Mm -hmm. But what I was trying to tell one earlier is when everyone, not if, but when everyone calls you crazy mm -hmm. and doubts you mm. and the news does and everyone else, you have to be able to push through that and keep tapping into that purpose. Part of writing it, that's another good tool is writing it down, yeah. putting it on paper. That's another thing that keeps me going mm. is I'll look at it. Mm -hmm. No, this is where I'm going. Exactly. And, you know, I think a lot of people make small plans. They don't really plan far enough. You know, like you're saying, every year you're already making more and more projections. Those projections for you go out years into the future. Yes. A lot of people are only planning what they're going to do with their paycheck next week. So true. That's too short. They're going to, they're planning what they're going to do tomorrow. Yeah. You have to begin to think in a much more grander concept of mindset in terms of legacy building, right? That's what I have this board behind you on the board, legacy, right? On the opposite, That's on your right. other right, oh yeah, right there. 
legacy, right? And so we're talking about the legacy mindset, the infinite mindset. We're talking about what we what we what Mark and I actually do is we literally create ripples in the space-time continuum that alter our future reality in the third dimension. We travel through time with conscious thought backed by action. <clears throat> and that's how you make an impact and a change in the future that you desire and that you want to see happen in your life, in your family's life, for future generations to come. Not just what's happening tomorrow, plural. the next week. Exactly, generations. I want a photograph of myself on my great, 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 great grandchildren's wall. This is, that's great, 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 great grandpa. He's the one that set us up to why we're living like this. He's the one that broke the matrix code so we can have a certain level of, of knowledge that's being passed down and taught in a way that we can continue to persist on this level. That's you know? right. And then your purpose that you've created, that legacy, is still serving people yeah. when you're gone. Exactly. Because, again, it's, it's, not, it's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So true. So true. So how did you come up with writing this book? 16 Reasons Why Your Business Sucks. <laughs> Incredible book, by the way. Bestseller. By Mark Menard. And if you're on TikTok, make sure you follow at Mark underscore Menard on TikTok. Mark underscore Menard. And make sure you get this book. All right. Incredible book. You gave this book to me the first day I met you. Mm. You popped your trunk. Yeah. You came to my house to say hi. I'm a new neighbor in the neighborhood. Or you, I was the new neighbor, actually, I think it was. I can't remember which one it was. But you came to introduce yourself to you me. Moved in around the same time, I yes. think. Yeah. yeah. The first thing he did was pop this trunk. Yep. Like Master P with the cassette tapes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> and he I'll handed me the book. A, I, hey, I'm always on the hustle and always on the grind. Yeah. You were just showing me your your amazing new watch collection right. that you're working on. Yeah. For yeah. the, you know what I mean? Like we are, I, I always carry mm -hmm. books with me, stuff with me for different people that I run into yeah. a ton. You have to. They may read it, they may throw in the trash, but I'm not going to pass up a different opportunity Exactly. for someone that I feel like is like-minded and stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. And then yeah. you and Elizabeth, well, I didn't even know you guys had books yet either. Yeah, yeah, we had books too, so we and gave them our books. And they pulled their books out. <laughs> and then we've all been on, the, actually, I still gotta have Elizabeth on. Okay, yeah. I still, I've been reading her book too. Nice. Her story's powerful. Yeah, it's a powerful story, yeah. But yeah, th this book, so it says why you suck, but the subtitle gets it's how to be freaking awesome at every level of your business, leadership, <laughs> profits, and build yeah. your own dream team. Leadership is not taught at no. all. Nowhere. And what I started learning with, so I was getting successful at my company, mm -hmm. yeah. but I started learning, I really have to get a better understanding of leadership, mm -hmm. which we were talking about it earlier, yeah. not only how to hire, but how to fire people that mm -hmm. aren't, when they're not willing to be coachable yeah. or train and start to be toxic to your culture. Yeah. It sound the movies and stuff make it look like all the big business. It's so it's not easy to fire someone. No. Especially when you're building a company or at first you have five, seven to it, it's human beings you're working with. Yeah. But I, I realized, man, I hit like a ceiling with my company and I realized it came down to leadership. Mm -hmm. So I just got obsessed like with anything else with how do I learn about leadership? What are the other good business leaders doing that are killing it? What mm -hmm. are they doing different? Yeah. And that led me on this whole trajectory of like studying every part of the business, then applying leadership with my team, with my culture, learning like, not in the cheesy way, but how to ha like have actually healthy conflict mm -hmm. and, and discussions yeah. and teach people, hey, this isn't working out here. We mm -hmm. got to change this to grow. And, and sometimes there's a lot of drama going on, but instead of just ignoring it and being mm -hmm. on eggshells, because at first I was trying to people please. Yeah. And I, I would be, I kept someone on for like two years because he was a family friend. Meanwhile, mm. he's gossiping, backstabbing, <laughs> yelling at everyone. And I learned later on, I lost a lot of good team members yeah. because I would, I take accountability was being a coward as, as mm -hmm. the leader. Yeah. Because I, like real leadership is serving your team mm -hmm. and serving your team. Also, I learned isn't just that also means when someone's cancerous to the purpose and the cause, 
you have to have the call and the guts to know when it's time to actually remove someone. Yeah. And that's part of serving the team because you can get less done with more of the right people. That's right. Than you can with yeah. m with having more team members that are toxic. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because toxicity is is contagious and it gets passed from person to person. And the good people can become toxic as well. Or, or, or leave. they'll leave. They'll leave. The good, like eagles are attracted to other eagles yeah. that soar and like pigeons and turkeys are attracted. Mm -hmm. So they don't stay. And then I learned the power of unity. Mm. So when you can have a really solid team, yeah. stuff still happens. Yeah. You're saying life is going to life. Yeah. But when you can get this power of unity in your team and then have momentum, mm -hmm. I've, I like I I don't know if you guys have heard it, but there's even an expression with there's a type of horse that when they like they can pull a certain amount of weight by mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. I forget the type of horse that it is. You okay. probably know knowing yeah. all the science and stuff, <laughs> but it's crazy because you would think Clapsdale is, and I forget how much weight they can. Yeah. I'm just going to make up a number. Say it's like a thousand pounds. Yeah. But when there's two of them together, you would think they'd pull 2000 pounds, mm -hmm. but it's like, it, yeah. don't quote me on this, but it's like 4,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. It like four X's. Yeah. And that's the, like the power of unity with a good team and leadership. So then I started working with other businesses, other business owners, mm that were their company, their products were amazing, but their leadership sucked. Yeah. And I'm like, you, he, he, it's crazy. Like grown men, grown women that are so yeah. powerful. I met that they're not willing to go across their office and have a conversation with their partner mm. about something so silly yeah. that they haven't spoke for six months and it's affecting their whole company. And I've helped them to mediate, to have a conversation yeah. because healthy conflict you're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's again, yeah. if you see a correlation here, this is going out of your comfort zone right. again. Right. But, but you have those like courageous conversations. Then when you actually resolve conflicts, because mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't used to that. They're yeah. used to just gossiping, drama. Yeah. When you actually are able to resolve it mm -hmm. and then grow closer from it, mm -hmm. that's where that unity comes from. Nice. And that's nice. all that what has led to the book from, you know, 17 years of in the trenches experience. I yeah. got sick of being paid to speak and seeing a lot of people yeah, man. with great books that, that I'd be with them in the green room and I don't yeah. mention names. And I'm like, yeah. well, that's a cool concept. How many team members? Oh, I don't actually have a company. I've never. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, you just gave the worst advice. That I know. It's not practical. Not it's practical. so theoretical. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've been in the same situation. You know, just being in my industry and having a lot of peers in, in, in science and archaeology and research, I've been in the green room and even on stage with some people that actually have never even read some of the ancient texts, tablets, papyruses, cylinder scrolls. Some of them have never even been to the sites. I was just going to say, have they ever, have they ever actually <laughs> been? No. They're like, they're like, like teaching about this is the way it smells. And man. I'm going. And I'm like, you, you read that off like a Taurus right. freaking like summary of Bro. that. And I'm going, wow, <laughs> if these people knew what I knew about some of these people, they don't even listen. So I understand what exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. It's pr look pretty crazy. Where you are now and look where they, that's the yeah. thing is like. Yeah you use that fuel like i was taken aback because they were six but i used that to mm -hmm. let it drive me it became a bigger yeah. purpose there's all this crap out there mm -hmm. someone needs to be sharing some more real stuff yeah yeah real stuff man that's why he's got the book make sure you get this book all right by mark menard m-i-n-a-r-d mark menard all right make sure you guys get it over here on TikTok. amazing book Hey everyone, Billy Carson here, Forbidden Knowledge. If you remember, about a year and a half ago, we launched our first round of raising capital, which was a Reg A+. Shares were only $1 a share because our pre-money valuation came in at $20 million, not a bad start. About 90 days later, we had our new evaluation that came in at $30 million, rising our share prices to $1.50. By the time that second round ended, we were around 5,000 total investors in the company. Well, guess what? The long awaited round three is actually here and you can now invest. Good news though, our pre-money valuation has come in at $50 million and our share prices are now at $2.50.
To learn more, make sure you click the link, make sure you go to forbiddenknowledge.com and click on invest and find a way to be a part of this amazing growing opportunity. First thing he handed me when I met him, <laughs> new to the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, just uh, like I said, it's a great book, especially when you if you're looking to build it, not just if you're building a business, but just to understand leadership qualities, period. It's true. So you know, true. They, they come they come in handy so much. What helped me with my leadership ability in my companies, to be honest with you, was coaching women's basketball. Mm. So I used to coach first. I coached the boys basketball AAU. Uh, I never did junior Olympics with the boys, but I got to like the 13, 14 and under. I started seeing the egos, man. It was just like too many egos. And, you know, they right. don't want to listen and they don't want to. I can out out athleticize this guy. Why would I want to run this play? Yeah. You know, I'm forget coach. He doesn't know what he's talking about, you know, type thing. And so uh, I switched over to doing girls basketball because my daughter wanted to play and my oldest daughter at the time. And so I started coaching girls basketball. And as I got into co coaching girls basketball, I noticed it was more you have to become more of a tactician. You need players with high basketball IQs because they're not going to jump over anybody. Right. They have to execute plays and sets. They have to understand game time situations and situationals. Right. And so I really fell in love with this sport from a mm. whole other perspective. But the, what it taught me, though, was also then understanding how to manage individual players right different personalities different personalities that's a huge thing we yeah. talk about too yeah huge and because if you don't know your you're screwed. personality yeah because if, if you don't you can't talk to everyone the same way you can't address everyone the same way but you can get the same point across yes yeah can you touch on that a little bit it, there's the, such a key to to good leadership and understanding we we do a thing called the disc test. Mm. It's a, you can even look it up online and stuff, but it, there's different ones out there, but it helps kind of, and it's a good one too, kind of like mm. the marriage one that you guys have yeah. with your different personalities. Yeah, It's like that, but it helps you understand different team members. And so me, like I'm, I'm like on the go, I'm driven and I'm like so quick to be like, let's do this, this like bullet points, bullet points and on, on to the next yeah. thing. Yeah. And it, first like taught me about me to teach myself to turn around and come back mm -hmm. and be like, do you, do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> like it starts with you as a leader on top to yeah. be accountable. And then also understanding some of the other personalities, what some people's different needs are. We mm -hmm. even are really strategic with our gift giving and our mm -hmm. bonuses. Yeah. I have a team member I pay that goes on recon missions to find things mm -hmm. that aren't, that we surprise them with something so personable, mm. like for different gifts. So it's more than just your regular, like, yeah. how did you even know? <laughs> we have like our monthly all team meetings where mm -hmm. we're all together in person, mm -hmm. but it's understanding there's different personalities that you need to learn to work with. But where we don't adjust is if people don't have our same core values. Right. So, you can you need to learn to work with different personalities some people can be more blunt some meet, need more of like an explanation explaining yep. like the why yeah some some want to just ask, to be asked like hey how's your day going first mm -hmm. and it, it's understanding all that with the different people you work with but then exactly. it's at the end of the day saying we're we're grown-up men and women mm -hmm. and here's what we have to do yeah but when it comes to our core values, mm -hmm. like we like the golden rule, we have a no gossip policy. We don't steal. Mm -hmm. Like if people are doing that, I don't care what your personality is. Yeah. Like if you're stealing and stuff, like yeah. you can't. Yeah. Or if people are lazy, that's not a personality disorder. That's a character flaw. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a word. I, I mean, like I write so much on it. It's so important and so mm -hmm. much on dealing with conflict. And yeah. it starts with getting to understand yourself mm -hmm. and then understanding how, and it takes practice. It's like a muscle it takes practice and then working with it. And it, it never, by the way, it never ends. Yeah. Never ends. If and I'm like, I'm yeah. perfect at everything now, I would be lying. <laughs> yeah. You're constantly learning. You are. And it's, it, it takes practice, but it also takes courage. Absolutely. That's the part where a lot of people fail when it comes to dealing in leadership. There's a certain level of courage that's needed to make these tough decisions. Right? You're the captain of the ship and the captain has to make tough decisions from time to time. That's right. Uh, and it's always in the best interest of the group as a whole or the company as a whole 
not directed towards the one person that you may or may not have to let go or things and things or situations or rules that need to be changed or guidelines that need to be modified. It's really all about the company as a whole. If you're going to become a real, a real leader. And one thing I know that you've done also as a real leader, which I recommend for everyone is you must know every single aspect of that company from the bottom Yes. All the way to the top. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Master it before you delegate it. Mm -hmm. Because if anything happens that you don't, and I love my people that have my head leader now start at the bottom work. Yes. I had people with MBAs and stuff apply for it, mm -hmm. but she worked her way off. So she understands every level of it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you get more respect from the people, the team members. When you, when, when, you know, when I was doing a business, and I would start at the bottom. I remember I had a call center and I would hop on the phone from time to time. Yeah. And they'd be like, why is, why is Billy hopping on the phone? Yeah, yeah. Y'all watch this. Watch me put these sales <laughs> on the board right now, right? That's right. And I start writing more deals than them. Yeah. You get respect. Or I hop on a TO, get up, let me, finish, let, me, let me finish this call for you. Yeah. Certain level of respect. And when you can do every level of the business from the bottom all the way to the top, the, the team members, they, they develop a certain level of respect, understanding, and also belief in you as well. So true. And then the next level that I learned is to start from becoming a leader to then building other leaders. Mm -hmm. And that took a whole other level of delegation, yeah. teaching, and creating someone else that mm -hmm. could basically, I call it delegating your mindset. Mm. Because it's your vision, it's your baby, so you're yeah. teaching them to be able to bring in their unique qualities, but mm -hmm. also think the way you would think and understand the why. Yeah. And then they're able to start elevating as a leader and then getting them to start creating other leaders. Yeah. And you start building this ripple effect of mm -hmm. that throughout your company. Yeah. And it, it, take, it takes a lot of work. Just encourage yeah. is so spot on. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's persistent and consistent. But at the end of the day, if we don't do it, you know, everything would, would collapse. Uh, you'll be you you would make money, but it wouldn't be and you would help people, but it wouldn't be the amount of people you could help and it wouldn't be the amount of revenue your company could potentially generate. And so every single day when we wake up, I consider myself unemployed. I gotta go get it every day. I'm with you. Yeah. I I will hide I don't see I purposely move my money into other accounts and keep less than mm -hmm. the one that I see every day. Mm -hmm. I'll even have yeah. it to where sometimes it'll go negative. Yeah. To feel like, because if, yeah. if you're constantly seeing it and getting too comfortable, you get comfortable. It's, it can happen. <laughs> yes. And That's if, crazy. If they have the same technique. <laughs> do you, so, I'm telling you, everyone's success leaves clues, though. Man, that's crazy. And there's another person I know that does the same thing. And I yeah. had to start learning. It's I learned that, and I yeah. I perp. And it's funny because I'll be like, "Crap, yeah. it's negative," right. and it gets me in my head, and I'm like, "Yeah." I'm not even, oh, I open the other one every once in a while. I'm like, ooh, we have all that. No, nope, yeah. I don't hide it. Hide it. That's and right. Get it ready to invest, do something with that's it. That's right. Move it around, yeah, diversify keep it. Out it. Of sight, out of mind. Yep. That, that's a whole other level on like yeah. building wealth and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No but doubt. if you see it every minute, it makes it so easy to spend it when it's right in front of your face. Yeah. Where, where, by the way, there's levels to this, and, and it starts whether you have $100 in your account mm -hmm. or $2 million. Yeah. Yeah. It's still the same. It's like the start same. to put it out of sight, out of mind. Start yeah. to take some cash out even. Exactly. And so with the last 15 minutes we have on here, let's talk a little bit about how uh, race affects business, how it affects team members. Um, you know, within your company itself, I'm pretty sure you have, you know, a, a diverse group of people working for you. How do you handle situations with dealing with race, equality and things like that? We only hire white people, white males, <laughs> white straight males. <laughs> Just take that clip and make that. Yeah, they don't. Some, somebody's somebody's <laughs> going to take that clip and make it into a real clip. Look what he said. Oh, my God. They will God. never listen to the rest of the, of um, the podcast. Jeez. <laughs> listen, it's not even just in business. Yeah. Obviously, like, of course, racism exists and stuff. And me going through my same thing where I had this whole me against the world victim mindset, mm -hmm. I had some crap still happen to me that wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. But what I had to learn like personally was the more I dwell and like hold myself down, mm -hmm. like so, some of this stuff where it drives me crazy when they say, 
white privilege because the the freaking matrix that you talk about all the time mm -hmm. is saying literally by saying that is making it look like you're less you're less than yeah, right that's like saying it's supposed to be bad against white people because yeah. they have privilege and i, I get it wh yeah. what people are saying yeah but also it's automatically assuming it's planting a seed that there's like this higher it starts to create division between yeah. unity and i, I just and I'll get into my company, but just a point that I want to bring out is if I'm a billionaire, when I'm a billionaire and you're a billionaire, yeah. we've both made it to be multimillionaires. Right. When, when we are going to meet each other and talk about business, mm -hmm. do you think Billy gives an F that I'm white? And do I give an F that he is black? Nope. Not, not, and, not, and, not and a I'm, single bit. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys like at other levels I'm not even I'm not even wasting my energy no. thinking that. And I've seen this. And it because yeah. it, it I've sat in those sucks rooms. you down. And then on the yeah. other end, I could be thinking every minute, oh, if I do this, am I going to offend him? Am I and then we might not get the deal done. Yeah. Genuinely like be you. Yeah. And so when it comes to my company, I, I always hire, I don't care if someone's purple, pink, blue, black, white this that who is the most qualified to do the job mm -hmm. and we go through so much of our hiring process yeah. and stuff is who we're gonna freaking hire yeah and i've told I, our direct it's like if you're hiring someone to play on the nba mm -hmm. i'm not gonna look at the are they gonna be the best for the team exactly and like the number one question i ask myself like with my company dream shine is i always step back and look at when it comes to hiring, firing, every mm -hmm. is what's best for Dream Shine. Exactly. Because without that, like none of us have anything yeah. for what I do. Yeah. And that's the best way to do it. It's always who is the best for the job, who is the best for the team, who is the best for the group, who's going to be able to contribute for their whatever their part is, right? Yeah. To the their their piece of the puzzle. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And what you said earlier, you hit on something really important. I've sat in rooms now because I've sit. I have friends on my cell phone that I call that are billionaires, you know, right? You too, right? So we have billionaire friends. Of course, we have tons of multi-millionaire friends. Uh, you've been to my house during um, New Year's Eve parties mm -hmm. and birthday parties, right? And it's a it's a mixed crowd. Yeah. It's a mixed crowd of people. It's I mean, every race. I'm talking about every race. My, my wife's from, I don't even, I, I had a false civil suit on us one time yeah. and I didn't even... My wife's from Sierra Leone, West Africa. I have a whole yeah. blended. I don't bring that up. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, man. but no, it's uh, exactly right. You're, you have, you're in a mixed uh, race relationship. And so am I because my wife is Asian. Well, my wife to be is Asian. So, but the fact that the point I'm banking up is the people that are in that circle that get to come to my house, these aren't the people that are bickering and fighting over whose race is what race. There's levels. It, it, There's levels it, to the game. Here's what drives. Here's <laughs> what drives me. No, this is what really makes me mad. Yeah. It's used. I'm not. I'm not sitting here as a white dude saying that people that are black don't go through racism. That would be ignorant. Yeah. What I'm saying is the the news and stuff uses like a virus to plant this division. And it gets people arguing about all this crap all the time versus putting that energy into going after your dream. Yeah. And divide and conquer tactics. And it's in it, it's working. And and at times when I find myself caught up in some of that, I'm like, what's oh, I've been watching the like, why am I even talking about this? Yeah. It's like, a lot of divide and conquer tactics. It's good to address the situation, understand them, and try to work on solutions for the problems at the of same course. time, understanding that there is an agenda. There yes. is a divide and conquer agenda. And the higher you go up in financial status, the more you find out that the racial disparity disappears. Nobody really gives a crap. But, it's pretty much just for middle class people or lower in most cases. Not all cases, but in most cases. And people don't tend to understand Success that. leaves clues. Yeah, like, I know. What, like, listen to what Billy just said, because that was so deep. People that are incredibly successful. Yeah. Yes, there's some outliers. There's always going to be some stupid of racist course. jackass in life. Of, but it's 99% of them don't have time for that crap. No, no. My good friend that's building all these companies, 
this good dude, he, he grew up in the hood. He was dealing drugs since age nine. He's now very successful. I remember asking him with all the drama back when Trump was in office and stuff. He's mm -hmm. this big black dude. And I'm yeah. like, what, what would you think about this if you met Trump? Right. And I was thinking more on the, I'm like, what would you ask him? He's like, he stopped thought. He's like, I, well, I would ask him, how did you become a billionaire? And I'm like, he's on it. He's not saying that the stuff Trump was saying was right. He's not it's on under, that. It's understanding. He's at another level of how can I pull this wisdom out yeah. of this? It's you know, a different level. Sometimes I make quotes, and some of the quotes that I make are from people who aren't not sometimes aren't the greatest people, aren't the greatest, have had not been the greatest human beings. But sometimes you have to understand there's an old saying, a wisdom teaching. It says, when the master points at the moon, the imbecile points at his finger. And what they're saying is, I'm showing you the moon, right? Mm. And instead of focusing on the, uh, the understanding of the concept or, or the idea or the knowledge or the wisdom, you're pointing at the finger. And sometimes we get caught up mm. pointing at people instead of pointing at specific things that might be able to be applicable to your actual to your life to just your so, purpose just to your purpose and it's your energy exactly and we can actually begin yeah. to block our blessings yes by segregating ourselves from information right because we think this particular person this or this particular person that but sometimes those people can say the most wisest thing that person that so has true. the most darkest soul <laughs> can say something that can literally change your life if you understand it, discern it, and actually apply it. So it's not that we're saying that everyone's perfect, but there's information and in, good information in everything. Yeah. You have to yeah. find it. You have to listen. You have to be ready and willing to hear it. But sometimes the divide and conquer tactics and all, all, all the agendas, they'll blind you into blocking everything that one person has to say just because they and said and he did this or she down. did that. That's what drives me. Keeps crazy. you down. It, it acts like, oh, we're here to help everyone. We're yeah. raising awareness. And I'm like, you guys no, people aren't seeing this. No, they're not. No, they're just holding you guys down. They don't. They I the wish, I the wish they cared, but they don't. Yeah, the boots definitely but, on the but neck. Like the good news is you can you are like the master of your fate. No yeah. matter any human being on this earth is born. I, I know you we have different beliefs, but it's still a source, yeah. a power. Mm -hmm. I call it God. You call it something else. Right. If we're all created from that same source, mm -hmm. I don't care what color your flesh is. It's yeah. so stupid. We all have that same power within us. Every single and person. And when anyone tells you differently, that's what pisses me off. Yeah, yeah. Because I hate it. I, I've been the underdog. I've been thinking that. And I hate it when people feel I'm not, I can't do this. I can't do that. When you have that god within you it's all every human being has god within you because you're created from it well the question is what is the color of spirituality there is no color of spirituality right if i was to strip off the meat the meat suit off of every single person in the world we wouldn't identify what race anybody was right. this would be a bucket of nerves floating around with a brain a brain stem and a brain attached to it so we have to begin to realize that we've been uh, we've been tricked. Yeah, we've been tricked. We've been given a system that has been put upon us where has allowed man to dominate man and not just white against black. It's been black against black, black against white, Asian against indigenous, indigenous against age. Right. I mean, this cycle, the further I go back in ancient texts from the very first text I can find, there's evidence of slavery going on there. Right. And so it just this is something that us as people on this planet have to finally say, you know what? It's time for us to grow up. You break free. Look, like you master your minds. Your mindset is the slavery. And it's, it's hold, like you said, the middle and lower class. Why is it that the wealthier people of all different colors can go to a room and they're not on the whole race thing because yeah. they're, at a bigger purpose, but people think, well, it's because they've been born with privilege. They no, both of us came from nothing. Nothing. You came from nothing. I came from nothing. You had good parents. You had a good system, and you still went and took yourself and put yourself in a nothing situation. Right. And you had and to I rise had to start up. On my own. You yeah. had to pull your britches up. Yes. And you had to go to work. You had to take care of yourself. You had to find a way out of that dark matrix, which you did. Yeah. And so, uh, you, you, we all have different roads that lead to a path that we're on. Uh, there's a path to enlightenment 
and there's a there's a dark road that goes to a, to a path to darkness. Mm. But there's a hundred and one ways to enlightenment. Yeah, there's not just one specific path, not just one specific way. But uh, unfortunately, the, these these dark agendas from uh, from these multimedia, these mainstream media, and these news outlets, they pump fear, they pump distaste, they bump distrust, they they pump. Uh, a lot of dark information to keep people on a low frequency because when somebody so drops their true. frequency to fear, then that fear can be molded and bent into anything that they want. And the more fear that you get into, the more fear you're going to find, the more things are going to yes. grab your attention. When you start looking at more uh, people fighting on social media, every time you open your feed, prophecy. you're going to see more fights, right? Yeah. Whatever you, whatever you, the, the algorithms on social media work just like the universe. It's so true. Whatever you keep looking at is going to pop up. That's more right. And, more. and your brain is, the, I, I don't know how much time we have. I have a quick story yeah. with when my wife and I first started dating. Mm -hmm. We were in Columbus, Ohio, the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I'm a white dude. She's from Sierra Leone, West Africa. And we would go to places and people would stare at us. <laughs> yeah. And I would all, but at first I would be like, what, what is everyone's problem? What mm -hmm. are they, like the, they're, they still have a problem with it. Yeah. They're still like, at least it was like the two thousands. And like, I thought we were somewhat past inner everywhere we went, they would yeah. stare. And I'd be like, man, at times I get angry <laughs> at times. I'd be like, kind of sad. Like, yeah. man, we're going to have kids. We're going to, then now when we go out, no, like no one stares anymore. Yeah, it's normal now. It's been normalized. Yeah. The last time Only goes thing by. that changed was my perspective, though. Yeah. Ah, I quit, interesting. I quit focusing on what I realized was I don't know whether they were or not staring at me. Maybe I was going in there with her, like looking around at everyone, like with this, not knowing it. Yeah. That I'm like, looking you're, for you're, you're people. creating and the and atmosphere. They you're creating you're it. putting the energy out there. And yeah. then they may have been just looking back at me like, why is this guy so angry? <laughs> and I'm thinking he's against our interracial cup. But I then yeah. I realized over time, it, the whole world hadn't changed and all that. Yeah. I stopped thinking about it. Uh, it became so normal that yeah. I just didn't pay attention. Every once in a while, there's always going to be some stupid idiot. Of course. But that's like one out of like yeah. a million yeah. people. And I, and yeah. that's the importance of like perspective and focus on, on yeah. anything, a real life example of what you put your energy into, yeah. you attract more of it, good or bad. I agree. I agree a thousand percent. And, it, you know, that's the same algorithm that they took from the universe and put it into these platforms. They, yes. They didn't, a programmer didn't invent these um, these algorithms. Yeah. These are algorithms of the universe, right? These are literally algorithms. This TikTok I'm talking to right now, you guys are on the universal al algorithm. If you start looking at women with boobs shaking and doing these two inch dances on TikTok, It'll that's all you're going to get on your feed. That's all you're going to get. You start listening to knowledge, understanding, wisdom, right? But like we're talking today, you'll get more of this on your feed. Right when we both open our Instagram, he opened his, I popped up, yeah. I opened mine, you pop, and people <laughs> always like it's so negative. I'm like, really? I'm seeing this motivational quote, this because that's what I follow. Exactly, exactly. When I open my Instagram, I can open my Instagram, TikTok, or any other social media account in front of anybody, even a kid, because when it opens, there's not going to be any naked women jumping around. There's not going to be any naked guys jumping around. It's going to be good information that can help to change somebody's life because that's what I'm putting out into the universe. And that's what I'm looking for in my feeds. And that's what I'm getting back. Right. But once you just veer oh, off on that so popular cool. page and start clicking, oh, they, they gave me a little, they, they throw you some bait now. Look at this chick in this corner, little image. If I, if you tap on that. Right. Hey, I'm not, I'm, we're, we're God, I'm we're not going to lie and be like, I don't look at a woman and be like, she's beautiful. Yeah. And I've had a time where I, I clicked and I'm like, whoa, they're showing. And I'm like, and then it's over. I it's your whole feed. Your whole yeah. feed. <laughs> I, I've had, I started blocking at a time and everything. You got, you yeah. got to help hold yourself accountable. You got to hold yourself accountable and be able to check yourself. Yeah. But what people don't ever say is they don't want to, they're like afraid, especially like what to talk about this with race. Yeah. It's a bit, it's the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about and it. And I don't, I, and I look at it as I'm trying to free mindsets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I'm like, if we can help each other understand that you, can get stuck in this algorithm. Yeah. Not saying that things don't happen that are horrible. Oh, I've had but crazy things happen to me. Become more successful yeah. and make get Listen, at the level well, so you can be the change that you want to see. 
I'm a person that has been through experienced racism, lived through racism, seen racism kill my father. Yeah. Right. And, and, and but at the same time, I understand that there's eight billion people on this planet in America. There's 390 million Americans. One hundred ninety million of those Americans are actually adults out of one hundred ninety million Americans. I bet it would be safe to say, don't quote me on this exact statement, but I w- bet it would be safe to say maybe two percent of those people, maybe three uh, are have racist agendas. Right. Agendas. Th- yeah. Th- then you have uh, another maybe 20, 25 percent that are just like sheep yeah. following the herd. Yeah. And then the rest of the people at their true core, they just want to have peace and be loved yeah. and, and live the best life they could possibly live. Yeah. It's just like the algorithm that creates racism is the same algorithm that creates trolls on social media. Yeah. If you if you make a post on social media, right, you might get uh, I might get 50,000 likes and I might get uh, 300 comments and I might have five negative comments. Yeah. And those five negative out of all that positivity, like an S full essay sometimes, like (laughs) it'll stand out like, wow. Right. It's great. Yeah. But I'll be like, wait a minute. I had to start checking myself because I said, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I got 300 great comments. I've done that too. 50,000 likes and only five people wrote some crazy stuff. Yeah. Why am I being drawn? This is the same way the whole world's working. This is the real, this is the real world algorithm. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're, we're our minds are t- attached to that negativity. Yeah. It stands out over the positivity. Yeah, we negativity. have to. So that's, yeah. that's the whole point of shows like this. Exactly. We got to retrain ourselves. We got to retrain ourselves to identify that. Yes, it does exist. Don't yeah. doubt that it doesn't exist. Yes. But look at the positive as well. Yeah. There's a lot of positive. There's a lot more light than darkness. But this yeah. world and this media will have you thinking there's more darkness than light. It's so true. They'll pull that 2% that you're talking about and act like that's 100% of yes. the population. Yes. But like conversations like we're having now or mm-hmm. most that I have with people I know, yeah. I'm like, we're not talking about what they're saying. No. But they're acting like that makes up 100% of the population. Yeah, right. You know, they'll put shows on TV like Cops, which just shows cops running around inner cities, <laughs> locking boys, up inner boys. city people, yeah. like bad boys, where <laughs> they and it's funded by cops. And then so, but then you get the perception people, people who don't understand, who never been in those kind of neighborhoods or cities, right? They get the perception that that's 100% of all those people are like. That's so true. If they paint a picture yeah. that they want you to have in your head, yeah. And they know that most people are sheep. So you have to begin to unprogram yourself, unlearn to relearn and travel. The most important thing you could do on this planet mm. is begin to travel. You're a world traveler. I'm yes. a world traveler. When you travel, your perspective changes Elevates instantly. Elevates your perspective. You know, that's another thing I had on my vision years ago when we had nothing. Us, our family, I had world travelers. Mm-hmm. I had played, I could not, even not even comprehend how many we've like, yeah. Sierra Leone, West Africa. We've <laughs> yeah. been to so many places over the, but it changed. Mm-hmm. I saw so many white people in Sierra Leone, West Africa, and wow. I didn't know that there would be <laughs> as many as there was. Like yeah. I just, I didn't know. You don't know until so you know. So you then go. I learned, whoa, a lot of them come from this country, mm-hmm. and it, it's just you get to know each other as human beings mm-hmm. when you when you see more of the world and travel yeah no one there's good and bad people everywhere everywhere but the way the news had it was like they had the movie blood diamond where my wife's country's from mm-hmm. don't go there you'll get kicked. and i saw some of the most like beautiful beaches wow. met some there's muslims there's christians there mm-hmm. they get along wow see my wife's family by the way is muslim i'm a christian mm-hmm. They've always been so cool to me, yeah, and so and that's, that's normal. That's, there. And then you and you guys have been together for a long time. Seventeen years. Seventeen years married for seventeen years. And then I'll show that on the. And I had no. the, I thought at the time, oh, Muslim. Her family's. I'm thinking nine eleven. I'm thinking yeah, yeah. it's all like I was, <laughs> but tr- like I, I, yeah, I got the program Yeah, like that's if I didn't code. say that, I would be lying. Right. Right. And. Then from getting to know, get to know people mm-hmm. outside of that comfort zone and visiting and realizing, whoa, they're Christian, they're Muslim, they're all, t- there's good and some are stupid, some aren't, some <laughs> right, are right. cool, some are great. Yeah. But it wasn't the way that I had in my program mindset, the way the news had me believing at yeah. all. And if you would have never traveled, you would have, you would have never learned this. Mm-mm. Traveling is a I huge can't. perspective builder, huge. I mean, if you, I recommend every 
Yeah. Thug, gangster. Somebody calls himself a hardcore. I don't care. The hardest gangster in the world, right? I want you to get on a plane mm. and I want you to fly to Abydos in Egypt. And then I want you to give up all your money and your guns and I want you to stay in Abydos for one month and survive. Let's see if you can survive for one month in Abydos against eight and nine year olds. See, you think you are here. You think you're here That's until so you real. get to the real nitty gritty. And then right. you find out, oh, I'm not really there. Yeah. Because and when you start going, you have to start wiping your butt with your hand and you don't have running water or a bed to sleep in. You're sleeping in a collapsed structure with no yeah. windows and no doors. And you got. And you uh, think you have no listen. opportunity. You can you can <laughs> still die. I was in Sierra Leone. I saw the good and the bad. I, yeah. I wasn't ignorant. I, I, I heard a mom screaming in the street. Mm. She's like, oh, my God. And people around her. A little kid, di- her kid died wow. in this, and we were we had like a driver and stuff. My yeah. wife, yeah, and I started to go there, and he's like, "Stop! Wait. You don't know what <laughs> they may have something yeah. that we don't know what it is." Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "What are they?" And then I'm like, thinking, "Wait, let's call nine one one." There is no nine one one. There is no nine one one. There is no nine one one. There is no. <laughs> Doesn't <so> exist. <laughs> there, there really isn't. I know. And I know. it. it, it that hit me. I'm like, and I'm I'm pissing and moaning about I can't get this funding for my car. <laughs> and I'm like, I can call 911. It may be quicker or slower some places, and they will take me to a hospital. Yeah. And you see that, and it's like, geez. I've seen, you know, I was in Egypt when a hundred people got killed in their sleep because they were living in one of these dilapidated structures with no windows and no doors. And there was a plague of scorpions that week. And they went into those rooms and stung those people and killed a hundred of them while they slept on hard, cold concrete that night. So, um, yeah, we, you know, we have to be, we have to show gratitude and be yeah. thankful for our opportunities and stop taking the victim mindset all the time and travel to realize there's other people going through things out there that's not even close to what we're going through. Yes. And you see so much beautiful things oh, in yeah. that too. Yes, you, you do. See, like you said, the darkness and the light. You yeah. see through this struggle. Then I sat down like with this chief in this village mm-hmm. to let me pass to go see this whole, I felt like yeah. Indiana Jones <laughs> or something. And they were so kind. Yeah. And they were like, let me help you with your shoes. I'm like, no, let me, you're the chief. You're yeah. the, and I'm like, man, they shared like all they had, their mm-hmm. meal with me, yeah. their, it like you see such a beautiful side of humanity, yeah, yeah. but also the coexisting with a whole other level of struggle. Right. That it, it just, and we all need it. We all need it. We need it. We need it so we can understand. Hey, there's uh, there's a lot to be grateful for. Yeah. There's a lot to be grateful for. So, what final words would you like to say to our listeners today? I would just really like to say, like, right. I feel like right now we were talking about the news and stuff there is so much negativity going on and it it is like everything is doom and gloom the economy is going down the interest rates are high racism is at an all-time high there's wars going on listen i was hearing the same thing in 2007 I was hearing the same thing before that when I was in jail. And what I'm telling you is like, just tune it out, listen to more stuff like this and stop going out there and looking for that president or that person or that hero to save you because the hero you've been looking for is within you already. Mm. So, so you, I love you. Like if you haven't heard that enough, I love you and you're amazing and you don't need any other human being on this earth to be your savior because the hero you've been looking for is you. Mm, Powerful. How can people find you on social media? Uh, Everything's at Mark Menard, M-A-R-K-M-I-N-A-R-D on all social media, YouTube, all that good stuff. And then markmenard.net um, is my main webpage that has it all the podcast books dream shine everything so yeah i'll love to connect with all of you please do all right beautiful hey thank you man i thank appreciate you. you brother thank you for it's coming on honor. yes i hope y'all learned something today